intelligence assistance, I have to look somewhere besides Snake Mountain. That's why I called on you. Well, for a video, we're still waiting for Doki's engine, we're saving money up for that, hopefully early next year. But in the meantime, in March, from the whole shebang in the UK, I actually got a nice surprise. This is actually due in September, so I pre-ordered this way back then, and things got a little bit crazy, obviously. But uh, this is the Masters of the Universe Skeletor Bone Throne. Now, I've been wanting one of these for ages. Just let me waffle on here for a little bit. The first thing I wanted to do was, I just wanted a Bone Throne. So I was hoping for the classic Skeletor. There's no way you're gonna find one of those loose. So you're gonna pay around 1500 bucks Australian for the Snake Mountain just to get the Bone Throne. And although it's cool, I just have no space. Now, if we also think of the Origin Snake Mountain, now people have been selling pieces of that, but when I went to online, like eBay for example, that would already been sold out. Everybody bought the Bone Throne pieces, which is for a 5.5 inch figure, and this is a Masterverse for the 7 inch. So when it came up in March, I literally just impulse bought it. It was crazy. It's uh, perfect. So we'll open it up and have a look. Now again, I bought this from the great shebang, or the, old, the big shebang, something like that, in the UK, mainly because uh, the big bad toy store in America doesn't have PayPal. I looked around, maybe I missed it, but yeah, I don't own a Visa card, and or a credit card to be honest, so, and I never will now, hopefully, I just don't need them. So yeah, so this came from the UK. If we have a look here, we've got a bit of damage here on the box. I'm a little bit worried about that, but we have a packing box on the inside by the look of it, so maybe we've escaped. Other than that, the box kind of came through. There's a little bit of a, a whiffle here as well. But for the Bone Throne, from what I've been seeing, people have been getting theirs early as well. So I thought I'd just make this video because I'm away next week, so I won't be able to do it for a while if we get it over and done with. You're going to need three AAA batteries and a precision screwdriver uh, to unscrew it because this has a light up feature and if you've seen any of my videos before i am a sucker for light up anything leds you put on it and i'm there so let's have a look now, thankfully it's inside with its own little packing box a little bit bigger than i was expecting i don't have much room left on my little collector shelf i've got one shelf and that's it So we've got the packing. Use that box loaded. Okay. So we have a look here. Master of the Universe, Masterverse, Skeletor, and Havoc Throne action figure. It's actually called a Havoc Throne, but it's actually mentioned through material as a Bone Throne. And if we have a look. I found the pictures. We've got some. This is based off the comic version of the Bone Throne, which I think is the only time it appeared, to be honest. So I've got a couple of pictures of the Bone Throne in the animation series. Also, I have a picture of some of the uh, artwork. I think it was. Oh, I can't think of what it was now pre-production artwork or concept artwork, something like that. Oh, it's made in Vietnam, look at that. So yeah, the box made it through, undamaged, which is nice. A little bit of a squish here, but that should be fine, so. It'd be nice if this was on the other side, so I could just have that, but anyway, let's have a look. Yeah. Now this comes with a Skeletor from the Alcala, I think you pronounce it the uh, artist and I'll put up a bunch of pictures here as well of that Skeletor which looked moody and creepy I absolutely loved it as I've mentioned before I like to think of the universe in the first three mini comic books after that I'm not really interested I like all the figures and I watch all the uh, animation but uh, in my mind I like that So if you have a look, the first view here we have is the snake and a bat. Master of the Universe is known for great 
box art. Absolutely stunning. So this is beautiful. It's really nicely painted. No embossing of that from this side. So let's try and get the little fella out. will keep the box unlike some other people I just like to have it all there in case I've got to move again it's okay it is unassembled so we will have to do that so let's just have a, a moment to take in the box from deep within snake mountain skeletal rules from the bone throne so there you go not the havoc throne an ancient artifact crif there let me try that again. An ancient artifact crafted by the original inhabitants of Snake Mountain from the poison bones of Wyverns. The Bone Throne now serves as a conduit for Skeletor's havoc magic to seek out and capture the power of Grayskull. Which kind of reminds me again of the comic books where I always thought that Skeletor lived in Castle Grayskull. And, uh, I still like to think that. Let's have a look here. Beautiful work. Beautiful version of Evil Lynn. Oh, I've forgotten. Screech, is that the name of the uh, this one? Zoa is the other one for He-Man, but I'm pretty sure that's Screech. We have Panthor there without his armor. Beautiful. And this is the light-up feature we were talking about, but we'll get into that in a sec. Ah, look at that. A skeletal on his bone throne. It looks magnificent. Beautiful artwork there. Again. I'll show you some pictures of Skeletor in the original four mini comics. So this again, this figure is designed after after that one. So the feet are slightly different. We've got a little bit more embellishment on the shin guards. A new kind of centurion style cover over, which is a cape and the havoc staff. Very nice. And we have the bone throwing sitting there. All right, let's turn it around. We've got Beast Man and Merman. Very nicely done, true to their original style. Very nice. And then back to there. And at the bottom is just some legalese. Some blah, 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 if you're into that. So let's go ahead and open it. Let's check it out. The box is in really good nick. I'm happy about that. I will take some photos of it too, but we'll wait till it gets dark. We'll get some better lighting. I don't have a studio. My bedroom is my studio. Nicely packed in here. So let's take out this one first. So here we have it. Pretty decent box. This always reminds me of Dracula back in the uh, the 70s, this style. It's actually paint, but yeah, this is actually raised, which is nice. Very nice artwork. Also raised. A couple of creatures. I think these are from Snake Mountain. That creature looks familiar. Nice and simple. Okay, and this looks like the uh, it's the head of the bone throne. Very nice. We've got some cutouts here because we have a backdrop that this slots into. And I like the idea of repurposing the packaging as well to enhance your displays. I think that's a clever idea. So if we have a look here, we'll see how we open it. <laughs> the first thing we see is... All right, it's got little Velcro tabs, and we have the fur, or a very small toupee if you so wish. I shaved my head, so we could try. It's very nice, I wonder what that's made of. I'm guessing you could wash this as well if you spilt stuff on it, but that's okay. But yeah, we've got some tabs here, Velcro to kind of keep it on there. We have some paper, this is kind of loose, just flying around. 
bones look really good. They look like bones, which I appreciate. It's not just completely white like the Origins uh, Snake Castle, Snake Mountain Castle. Sorry, a little bit more detail on it as it should be for a master vest. That's part of it. Here we have the head. That's cool. I like the idea of this. I'm not sure what that's for, but maybe you can just hang it or something. I'm not sure, but this is very nicely detailed. Rubber's a little bit soft. It's not hard plastic, which is fine. And we have the socket there to pop it on. I think it actually moves too. We'll check that out. I think there's lights. I'll just take this out. something it's the snake mountain or snake men stuff I've never really into the snake men it's not my thing but it's nice to have the extra one if you're if you're into that nicely detailed very cool I like that okay so here we have the backdrop you really want to wash your hands before using this, but it's quite small, but nice nonetheless. And here we have the background. Very nice. So we'll just leave that out. And there's nothing left in the box there. So I'm guessing we close that. Oh, here we go. We missed something. Evil Lord of Destruction. Reminds you of the mini comics when it was actually uh, named under his his name there. Very nice box. structure before we start bending stuff. Anyway, I'll push that back. Here we have the main base, which is reasonably hefty, but it does have electric lighting in there as well. So we've got the base here with the alien style skulls. Very cool. underneath and here we have where we have to put the batteries so we'll do that in a sec we'll just look at everything else so these are our contents box skeletor his havoc stuff and the rest here which is good screwdriver and triple uh, a's Okay, so there's a one time assembly thing, so you've got to be really careful about that. Once it clicks in, it's in. We have the back view, the staff holders are one time fits, as with the lights. Here's something to note too, not for use with all masters of the universe, well some masters of the universe figures obviously, some of them won't fit in this, but again it's Skeletor's phone, but just in case you need that, I'm guessing Hordak would fit on there as well. Here's the cardboard fit, you see tabs, oh okay. tabs have little 
bendy bits on there that you can uh, move around. So I'm guessing that locks it in as well, if that's something you need to do. That's the throne display completed. And the buttons for the lights, which is the thing that made me purchase it. So I think that's it. Instructions, that's that one done. Put that away and back in the box. Okay, so the instructions are telling me that we have to put the fluffy stuff on first. Just push it through into those little tabs. It's not permanent, you don't have to worry about that. There we go, looks nice and comfy. Snake Mountain is quite drafty, so you do have to have something on there to considering everyone runs around in their underwear. So I'm just gonna pop the head on. Everything's ball jointed now so you can remove and replace stuff. Makes me a little bit awkward doing that. You have to push that, and it seems to be on. I like the idea there. If you want a sentient kind of bone throne, you can have that. Not sure what kind of creature this is from. It'd be kind of cool to see. That's done, that's done. And then this clicks on here. There's no crazy click, it just kind of pushes in. I'm a little bit worried about these little guys. You want to be very careful about that. Put the antennae on the, uh, the robot, which is weird. Okay, we already put the skull on. Now this here is a back piece. Turn that around. This fits quite nicely. Oh, there we go. We had that little click. Just give it a bit of a push there. There's the throne part there. It's pretty magnificent, I've got to say. So that's that done. Now we have some extra parts, the jaw bones, which are in here. These are super rubbery, super flexible. Guessing they go like that. And these are one time fitments, evidently. It's got a little star on there, so be careful of these. There's that click. I mean, you could push these tabs out and pop them out again, so I wouldn't mind so much with this here. That looks really good. Alrighty. Next I'm guessing is the cauldron holder thingies. So let's just have a look at that. These have a real 
burnished copper tone look. As you know, when copper oxidizes, it has that kind of green finish. Much greener than I was expecting. You can see it's highlighted there. So we've got a nice texture through. Very nice. And in here we've got that so it stays centered, which is good. And we have a little notch here too, so they can only go one way. If we have a look on the back here, we do have the little notch. It's pretty self-explanatory. And I don't think there's a left or right. They're basically identical. Except for the notch. So I'll just pop that in. One. It's locked in nice and tightly, as you can see. Uh, oh, that's why. So this kind of pushes through, I guess, like that. These are quite rubbery. And there's a little pocket that they can sit in in the in the bottom there. I'm left-handed, so I prefer this one on the left side and the Havoc staff on the right side. I don't know about everybody else. But if that's something you want to do, you can leave it in there. You could probably put some hot water to bend it around a bit if it's not straight enough. So that's quite cool. Yes, right side there. Let's have a look at this fella. Then we should do the lights. They're actually quite weighty. They look much nicer than the pictures. So these are just basic little covers, but they're really heavy. No notches or anything like that. They just kind of sit in there, I guess. So there's there's one here. This has an amazing burnished look. This looks much better. It looks like metal. Hard plastic as well. I thought it might be metal for a second, I don't think so. It's got to be quite resilient as well, I guess, because there's lighting and heat under there. But I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but the finish on this is amazing. It's beautiful. Let me have a look. Obviously, they just get stuck in there like that, but I just want to read it just in case there's a special way that you do it. Again, they say these are one-time pieces, so once they're in, they're in. But I also want the... Uh, they're not right or left. I want the... Looks like that. Let's see. Oh, I want that. Like this. I guess they spin around in the base, so it's not a big deal, but still. like that looks good so we've got the two two points of the flames facing in push that one in there we go and they do rotate so if you mess up you can still spin them around so that's not a problem damn that looks really good it's crazy couple of a step I wish this was a little bit deeper so you could kind of step down if you can see here we have some pegs very oops, very small pegs to keep his feet aligned kind of nice okay so there's nothing else in the bag that's basically it that is the drawing which is good if you have a look here this doesn't have the tabs. This does, these extra tabs. I'm guessing you fold them in, but uh, I'm not gonna cut them off either. So with everything done, that's there. I've just had the, the background just sitting there. I don't really wanna push it in there. I'm gonna put that bit away. But it's quite large once you get it all out and stuck there. It's pretty impressive. But we'll check the lights in a sec. I just wanna have a look at the skeletal first. Let's get that done. I don't think I'll display it on the box. I'll put the box away and just have that as it is, I think. 
it's, it's not nice. So, so if you remember our box, we had one more item. Now, I bought it for the throne, so I wouldn't even mind it if it's a little bit cheaper, but having this Skeletor, I already said the uh, Masterverse 40th would be the perfect Skeletor, but uh, I do like this option, and I think I'll display him at this option. So let's have a look at New Eternia. They've really knocked this out of the park. The uh, New Eternia. As you can see, my Skeletor head has fallen off. It looks cool in there though, you can see it there. So let's just have a look. A little bit of rubbing on the plastic here. Interesting type of packaging, it's all kind of angry. If they sell a Masterverse Castle Grayskull, I'm, I'm done for because you know I'm going to buy it. A Castle Grayskull of Masterverse size would be amazing. It's got a weird kind of thing happening at the bottom of the box here. A skeletal and all his glory on the throne. This looks amazing. It looks really, really good. Beautiful artwork. On the side, we have some spooks. Snake creatures, creepy creatures. Very nice. This is him without his head. There's that famous style Skeletor head that we know and love. Again, I've shown you some pictures from the mini comics already. Hopefully, I've popped those in there. 30 points of articulation. That's, that's pretty crazy. Oh, and here he's wearing his armor too. All right. Let me just open this up and have a look. Take this off. Let me open up the pack here. We have a little open tab to pull it out, which is handy. This thing's a little bit weird, regardless. I guess we stick our finger in here and pull it out. Ah, these are the hands. That's what that's for. Nothing else in the box. We have the content list, which is handy. Got a couple of different hands in here. Really nice to have them sitting in here, but whatever. Basic cover, so we'll just leave that to the side. Okay, and here we go. The cape is sticking out the back. It's stuck down the tape, which is unfortunate. It makes the cape sticky, so you want to remove that as quick as possible. This toy is relatively new anyway, so, well, brand new, so I don't think the tape's been on there that long, both sides. A weird thing to do, but whatever. That's pretty much he's free from this side. We have his hood, beautiful metallic finish, nicely textured. It reminds me of the uh, the fortieth anniversary one, which we'll do a comparison for. A little bit later, I completely forgot about that actually. And here's the skull. Beautiful looking, amazing detail. Look at this piercing red eyes. This is cool. The mandible is opening. It's nice and tight too, unlike the Masterverse 40th anniversary one which falls down. I don't know if you keep using this too much, they do the same, but it's very tight, which is good. 
beautiful. Very nice. Okay. Oh, this had little plastic strips, but uh, yeah, they, they came off. Here we have the Havoc stuff. The horns look quite large. This isn't metal like the 40th anniversary version, it's all plastic. See there, it kind of spins a little bit, that's fine. Now of course you can put this into the uh, the throne room on the other side as well if you so wish. It's quite thick on this side too. Very nice, good stuff. Okay, let's get this guy out. Ties. Let's just do that first. Ties and sticky tape. Since his head's off, we might as well just have a quick look. So this is removable. It's got a nice little area there for the power sword. He doesn't come with a power sword, but if you've already got one, that'll pop back in there. This is the new style buck, which I like. And then he turns around. Bit of waist movement. Arms move nicely. Elbows, hands. Bicep. A nice bit of blue wash coming through there as well. I'm not sure if that's coming up on camera there, but it's bluey purple kind of look through the knees, the back, forearms. You can do the splits. He's got the thighs, double jointed knee. Shin guards, which will uh, again, I think I've shown you a picture already, and you'll see those on there. We've got the the original feet there that was depicted in the cartoon. Very tight, you can hear it. And he turns around as well. You want to be careful with that. Very tight, which is kind of what you need got some nice detail in here well this is a little bit more red on the uh, on the artwork if you have a look kind of. you see here the jewel is much redder and this one you see it here it's the only little nitpick I have you could even put it like a nice piece of plastic like they did with web store with his eyes they could have done that with this jewel that would look amazing here we have the harness with the soft goods which is nice do you want to change that around or put it on different characters? Very nice. A very metallic purpley sheen on here as well, which is good. Stands up well, amazingly easy. Fantastic. Good stuff. Nice. I'm just going to leave this outside because it's not really uh, what I grew up with. We'll put that away. I've got to put his. Uh, let's just do this first. I'm not sure how hard you have to push these. Quite tight. I'll just uh, the thing is, we're having without his without his hook. Oops. Hmm. 
Yeah. Looks a little bit weird, obviously. I don't remember ever seeing him without his without his hood in the in the cartoons or or the comic. But yeah, there you go with this. It's pretty good. But yeah, let's do it as we all know him and put the hood on. So I'll pop the head off. Do a sleepy hollow if you're after that. Okay, so I guess you just pop it in this way. Is that it's supposed to sit? I'm guessing. That's the skeletal we all know and love. So obviously being a ball joint, this has a reasonable amount of flexibility there. So that's him there. Let's just have a look here. We've got... Grasper. Okay, so there it is in all his glory there. We'll just have a quick look at his hands. I like to get one of those little bank coin bags as well, just to keep his hands in so they don't get lost. And I'll keep this bag in anyway. So we have two more hands. Got this one, and you've got the fist as well. Nice. I'll use those for some poses a little bit later. On. Okay, let's pop his cape on. And if you put his cape on, you can't, uh, you can actually, you can put the sword through even with the cape, so that's a nice idea to throw it of everything down. Okay, and there we have him with his cape. Sockwood's one in there. It's gotten the sticky tape off of there, so it shouldn't affect it too much, hopefully. A 
cute Dan. He looks good. He does. He looks really good. And we'll take some photos when it gets darker tonight, and uh, you'll see this video sometime Saturday, hopefully. I'll, uh, I'll go find some of the other Skeletors, and we can do a bit of a comparison. Cheers, guys. Oh, actually, let's put him on. <laughs> Next, we've got to put him on the throne. That's the whole thing that we did it for. So one tick. All right, so we're back to the throne. We're going to need a precision screwdriver, and we're just going to take... It's a Phillips head. Just grab that. This has an automatic power off switch too, so the batteries won't go flat, which is thoughtful. Lift that a lid. And through our triple A's. Hopefully these aren't flat. it does. Really not to over tighten it, this is plastic, we'll thread it. So that's done. So if you have a look here, we have a little switch which is nicely hidden. And you press that. Mm, doesn't that look cozy? Some flickering lights, that's awesome. Now again, I'll do this at night so you've got a better look at it, but we can do some different colours. Dark green. Got a nice blue. And red again. I'm not sure what color I'd keep that on. I kind of like this, but it looks more mystical if you got like a green flame, I guess. And this is the color that is shown on the box cover as well. But that's pretty cool. So yeah, to turn it off, just hold that down. Okay, and there we have him. He's sitting there on his throne. Damn, that looks good. Change some colours. His staff actually presses down onto it, which is funny. what he looks like on the box and we'll do a comparison okay and there we have him obviously I haven't set that down this is actually going to sit lower if you put in the tabs I just don't really want to fold it up and wreck it and I wouldn't display it with this box anyway I like it just sitting with the uh, the plastic but if you choose to and there we go the skeletal bone throne or the havoc throne as it's called on the packaging all right guys all right next we'll uh, do some comparisons cheers Okay guys, we're back. It's uh, evening now. It's good. We've got some uh, some better lighting. We'll just do a comparison now of the Skeletors. Now, I've only got three. I didn't expect to get this one. It just came with the throne. This was my ultimate one, ultimate one sorry, from the 40th anniversary. And this was my childhood Skeletor from back in the day. But uh, I'm starting to really like this one more and more now that I see it. So if you have a look at the difference here, we'll just go with... This one here and this one here. So you can tell this is going from the Alcala cartoon, which I've already shown you and talked about there. As you can see there, the blue is much more muted than the bright blue that this one is. And this is supposed to be 
a replica of this so obviously that's going to look a bit more than that but as you can see we don't have the cape so we'll just take that off just to get it looking a little bit more similar So the main differences, obviously, are the feet. We've got the nice shin guards there with the gold trim. And this one doesn't have the detail here where this one does. I thought that'd be nice. I might even actually get my silver pen and do that myself. We'll see how we go. But you can see here the chest amulet here is more pink, almost ruby, rather than this. It is sparkly, but it's basically a silver clear. So that's probably the drawing, I'm not quite sure. You can see the faces here. Every skeleton now should have a mandible that opens. It should be standard these days. It looks great. This one does look good. You can see the hoods are quite similar. This one does have a more purple sheen to it. Obviously, it's the, the same mold for this. We've got the, uh, the power sword holder there. And this one here is more of a slot style, where this one is almost square. If you see in there, underneath is pretty much the same. This one's wearing, a, oh, actually no, this one's wearing more of panties rather than a the pouch type style. This one has here. And now that I see it, this doesn't seem removable. It's part of the the figure, whereas this one is. That's an interesting detail. I prefer the buck to this, besides the nipplelessness. If you've seen my previous review, I won't go on about that again, but this one seems to miss them too. I like the buck of this one more. He's more puffed out. This one's a little bit more skinny and weedy. It's not so bad. Same on the arms. They've both got the foot pegs too. They're really nice. I don't mind them. This one here you'll see too, there's a lot more blue on the hands. So when you look at the the standard hands, let's have a look here. So the 40th anniversary one is this one. It's much bluer, slightly open. And this one here is from the Alcala style version. And I think this is more so to recreate the poses in the comic book. They look very, very similar. Very cool. And they both have a clenched fist too, which is looks to be pretty much exactly the same. This one again is not as blue, this one is more bright. As you can see there. Oh, really mixed them around. Now this guy doesn't come with a power sword for some strange reason. They could have just thrown in a purple one, but uh, they didn't. But uh, if we have a look at the staffs, now again this is the 40th anniversary one, so this is actually metal. I haven't looked at it for a little while, but they are basically, they are exactly the same. This one has a sheen to it as well, but slightly different type of sheen. It's the metal one, yeah. But it looks to be the exact mold that hasn't changed at all, which is fine. This one looks awesome. So depending on what you like. I don't know, I kind of like them both. They're good. Okay, so it's those ones. And again, the 40th anniversary one had his own power sword. If you have a look at this one, it should stick in there. It actually matches reasonably nicely, to be honest. Which is good. But then again, it makes sense because he didn't have the power sword in the mini comics where this style of Skeletor was featured. He was always trying to chase it to access Castle Grayscale. So that might be why he doesn't have the power sword, which makes sense. He does obtain it in the, the four mini comics that this style is featured in. But he doesn't get to keep it, so maybe that's why he doesn't have the power sword. But in the comic books too, it's more of a silver one like He-Man. So you see him holding this style one. This is from the 40th anniversary too. In the mini comics, which you'll see when I, I do some poses with them. 
as well. So if you want, you could probably do that to uh, reenact him stealing the power sword from Castle Grayskull. So that fits nicely too. But if you have a look in the mini comic too, when he holds the power sword, it actually looks kind of muted, kind of short. So even if you wanted to hold one of the uh, the originals in here, it even seems to suit much nicer. Maybe the side would be better. It actually looks quite good with this one too, even though the, the purple is slightly different, but you get the idea. A little bit harder to grasp. And again, just to compare, I've already done this with a comparison with, uh, with another video I've done, but just so you can have a quick look. The original. It's a really nice update, as you can tell. Okay, so we just moved the 40th Skeletor out. As you can see, they're pretty much the same height. And comparison with the original Skeletor too, obviously, which it's not supposed to copy, but good memories of these guys. A bit of paint fade there, but yeah, he's held up quite good over the years. Okay, so there we have it. I think some really good lighting would look good on this, but again, he's got the opening mandible, which is awesome. Jaw. The one thing I'll notice here too, I don't think you can take these off. They look like they're stuck on there. Not that I'm going to anyway, but there you go. So yeah, let's just uh, pop him back onto the throne and just set him up and uh, have a look. And we'll see how the original Skeletor looks on the throne too. Probably tiny, but just to store for a laugh. And actually, we might try just to put this on the 40th anniversary one, just to see how it looks. I'm pretty sure you can pop off the head of those. So let's just have a quick squeeze. Before I do, too, I forgot. If you just want to look at the 40th anniversary here, man, which is probably my favourite, it's got the Iron Cross on there. He looks pretty good. They match up nicely. But I do prefer the spike with the abdominal muscles to this weird kind of shaping over this, as opposed to this one, which I think looks nice. This is probably the same shaping, it just doesn't stand out as much. Close up with our two heads. Obviously, this comes off the hood on this one. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. It's all glued together. But you can just see how much shinier this one is. It's just popping around. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. That looks good. I like that. Okay, let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, you kind of got to push it down nice and hard. 
purple doesn't mismatch too much. It's not too bad with the reflections. Obviously, it's nighttime now, so with daylighting, I might pop it out a little bit sooner. But uh, yeah, no, he doesn't look bad at all. I do prefer him in their their original configurations, though. So I will keep it that way. So we'll just pop them around. Just looking this out of the box now, he still looks good. getting used to popping heads and bits and bobs off. Okay, so that's those back. Does sit on there, not well, but it does. Looks a little, a little bit too much for him there, too hunched over. But if you so wish, there's an option for you. I do like soft wood gates. It'd be nice if it was a little bit wire, it had a wire or something like that. But that is the realm of the more expensive toys. It's got some bits cut out here as well. Let's see what the 40th anniversary one looks like sitting down on the on the throne. Okay, I've only got one classics left. I sold my scare glow, but I do still have loader. Let's just have a being purple, he kind of looks like he suits this as well. So let's just see what he looks like on there. On the throne. Oh, so there's loader sitting on there. They don't have much flexibility of these classics in here. It's more for uh, vehicles and stuff, unfortunately. So he doesn't sit in there perfectly well, but again, this fluffy stuff. But yeah, the hair there kind of hides it. But no, it does really well if that's something you want to do. I forgot to do this too. This is what the original vintage skeleton looks like in the throne. Yeah. Again, he doesn't sit in there quite well, but he's not supposed to. But yeah, you want a baby skeleton? <laughs> there you go. Okay, so there we have it. Skeletor's bone throne. Absolute awesome purchase. Very happy with this one here. I was really surprised with the quality around here as well. The lighting effects are awesome. The bones look really, really good. Free skeleton, well, not a free, extra skeleton as well, obviously, for the reason for that. And then you can just swap it out with your other ones. I think it's a great addition. It'd look great in your in your snake mountains too if you've got them. But yeah, I'm really happy about this. We'll just have a look around and uh, mess around some figures and do some photos, and uh, that'll be it. Cheers, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah.